It's an honor to be speaking in front of you today. I'm going to talk about my four years in uh, in app business. I've been doing this for four years full time, except for one uh, two month gig where I did some consulting, and was miserable. Um, I'm going to um, try and get through a lot of topics, so I'll just uh, move on. First, the uh, credibility slide. I have uh, I have 14 apps on the App Store. I've had over uh, four and a half million downloads, 500,000 um, unique users a month. Um, one metric I'm proud of is I have over uh, 1.1 million people I can do a push notification to. So I could open up my laptop right now and send a message to over a million people and tell them about the new great app I have coming out. So I, I started in uh, 2009. I just left a, a job, and I, I didn't want another job. I wanted to do a, a startup. But the main thing is I didn't want a boss. Um, so I searched around for some ideas. I had a bigger idea that I thought I'd start with. but. It would have required me getting funding and spending six months walking around asking people for money, and, and I felt it was tantamount to getting a boss. So I decided to scale back, and the App Store had about 50,000 apps at the time, and I thought, um, you know, maybe there's an opportunity there. Um, so I decided to, uh, to go for that, and I, um, I decided just to, uh, to go all in. I, I put $50,000 in the bank and decided, okay, once the money runs out, I have to get a job. I, I have to get a boss, and that, that's, that was the, uh, the fear that I was... I was operating under. So d just a few words about uh, bootstrapping. Um, you know, I f see so many people, they, um, they're waiting for the perfect idea. And once they get the perfect idea, they're going to start. I, I say, no, j just start. If you, if you don't start, if you're not in movement, serendipity is not going to happen. And serendipity will happen if you're, if you're moving. And it will happen if you're out connecting with people and talking to people. And I, I love uh, Evan Pagan. I, uh, he attributes this, this to somebody else, but he says, recognize when you're getting lucky in business and follow that. You will get lucky in business, but if you don't recognize it, it's not going to do, your, do you any good. And I've kind of likened my business to climbing hills. I, I had this first app I wanted to do. I didn't know what I'd do beyond that, but I climbed that hill, and w once I got that done, I got to the top of that hill, the next thing became obvious. And I climbed the next hill, and then the next thing became obvious. And it, it's just gone like that the whole time. I treat my business, I'm a developer, so I treat my business uh, like, a, like a development project. I, I do what I call incremental business development. So like I develop software, I start with something small, you know, hello world, get that working, and then add on to that, add on to that, and incrementally build out my software. That's the same way I've built out my business. And same thing with marketing. You can think of it like a system. It, um, it will react in certain ways. If you poke it, um, something will happen, and you, you see, did something good happen or something bad happen? If something good happened, you do that again. And for me, I know um, people have had success working their job and starting their business on the side. I think as a personality thing, for me, I had to go all in. I had to burn the boats um, and either make this work or not. I'm a product person. I did two months of, of contracting, and I always felt like I wish I was working on my, my own product. So I decided after that, okay, no more. Either this is going to work or not. And if you can't do that, if you don't have money in the bank, I'd say work really hard for a year, build up a war chest, and then go all in. And I, I love this quote from, um, from Seth Godin from his startup school. I think that when people are dancing on the edge of failure, and they are growing, and there's a void over there, but they keep moving forward, that's when we feel alive as people. And, and that's what it's been for me. It's been invigorating, and that's why I like coming to MicroConf, because I get to be around all of you awesome, alive people. So I uh, decided to do an app, and I looked at the App Store, and I, I had used a, a speed reading program on a PC like 15 years ago, and it's terrible, and there weren't very many good speed reading apps on the App Store, so I decided to start with that. I, I created Quick Reader, which I call a speed reading ebook reader. It's a, you've probably seen people at the, um, um, at the airport, you know, with their finger, using their finger as a guide, the Evelyn Wood reading dynamics method. Um, so this is basically a, a computer, uh, a mobile version of that, and you can set the speed from 10 to 4,000 words per minute and different kinds of configurations. So I created that app with about 10 books, and I created a light version with a couple books. Um, but I wanted a lot of books. The idea was I, I wanted uh, a lot of books, and I wanted you to be able to import content that you're interested in reading. So I added EPUB support. And then I went to the guys at Feedbooks. They had some really nicely formatted public domain books and said, can I use some of your books? And they said, sure, use whatever you want, just keep the, uh, the attribution. So I, I took full advantage of that. I added about 50 books to um, Quick Reader, and I created a French, German, and Spanish editions of the app, a Young Reader edition with, uh, with about 130 books. 
Um, and when I was talking to Feedbooks, they said, um, we're involved in a standard called OPDS. It's an open book catalog standard. Why don't you add support for that in your app? And then you'll get access to all of our books, plus all of the other OPDS catalogs out there with over two, two million books and all you can get access to. And I thought, that's great. See, see what's happening here? Things are just um, happening. I'm talking to people, and, and um, um, things are opening up for me. So I created, by that time, so I added the OPDS support. By that time, it had grown into a general ebook reader. So I stripped out all the speed reading functionality and created Mega Reader, which is just a straight ebook reader um, with access to those two million books, a highly customizable ebook reader. And th that did really well. And then I created a, a light version of that. And then I stripped out the reader altogether. It was kind of interesting. I built up all this functionality, and then I started stripping stuff out. So I created ebook search, which is an app that allows you to find all those two million books, but then to open them in um, iBooks or the Kindle app or whatever reader you want. And that's that's done awesome. That's a that's a free app. It gets about seven thousand downloads a day, and overall, it's had it's had over three and a half million downloads in a in a year and a half. And then I created a paid version of that. So I, I stripped out the advertising and I added a couple more catalogs and I charged 99 cents for that and cross promoted it from the ebook search app. And then, well, I got involved in this OPDS um, committee and we were talking about extending OPDS to other media types like audiobooks. And they said, we know the guys at, um, at LibriVox, if we could get them to create an OPDS catalog, would you create an audiobook app? I said, sure. It, it was something I was thinking about doing anyway. Um, in the end, I ended up creating the OPDS catalog myself. But that was actually um, fortunate because I found a bunch of other content and allowed me to create other um, types of apps. So um, a lot of what I do is I, I package content into different types of apps. So I created um, the first app, which was uh, ebook search, or uh, sorry, Audiobooks Pro. Um, and it's basically the, the same app. All of these apps are out of the, the, same, um, the same code base. So instead of a, a reader, I added um, an, uh, an audio player. Okay, so I created, a, the green one is a free version I just came out with. I had about, um, I found 1,300 French audiobook apps, so I created a French audiobook app that's been number one or two in the, the French books category since it launched. I created an audio Bible app, um, and I have plans for an audio poetry app and a, um, a kid's audiobook app. Um, as well, I have um, two, um, I have a free concert app I'm going to do and a Grateful Dead app and a PDF books app. So um, in, in the end, there are going to be about 20 apps that, Came out of, come out of the same code base. So this is the journey so far. So this is um, Quick Reader, the blue, and then I added Mega Reader, and the, the light green here is um, eBook Search Pro, and then the red is um, Audiobooks, and there's some other multicolors here. The, some of the apps just have a little incremental income. I've got four or five major apps, and then the other ones that add maybe 15 or 20 percent to my, my revenue, so it's uh, definitely uh, worth it. A few words about um, product management, how I decide to, you know, what to build. And a, a lot of people liken the app store, they, they say it's a hit-based business. And I would tend to agree, but the implication is usually that it's a home run-based business. And, and I don't agree with that. I, I think you can play a perfectly good game of baseball with singles and doubles. As well, you can do pretty well on the app store with singles and, and doubles, as, as I have done. And when you create your app, of course, it has to work well. It has to satisfy a need. Um, it has to look nice. And, and for God's sake, uh, developers, please don't do your own graphics. Um, <laughs> um, aim for the masses. Uh, on the App Store, look, the, the prices are you know, free to $5 maybe at the max. You, you, niches don't work very well, or they seldomly work. So I, I say aim for the masses. You have to sell a lot of these. So create something that a lot of people might want. A lot of people read books. A lot of people listen to audio books. Those are, those are perfect. International appeal, the, the, the international um, you know, app stores in aggregate are larger than the US app store. Two thirds of my revenue is international based. I've localized my apps in 16 different languages. 80% of my downloads are international. Interestingly, my, my number two um, paid uh, revenue country is Russia. My number two free um, download country is China. China doesn't even register on the, the revenue <laughs> graph. Um, Create a portfolio. So as a, as a bootstrapped entrepreneur, you know, I only have so much time in the day. Um, reuse and retarget your code base as much as you can. Look for adjacent opportunities. I, I call it eat the whole animal. You know, be as efficient as possible. Look for different ways to reuse your code base. Um, diversify. Um, device for, diversify your app portfolio. Diversify your revenue um, sources. And use your portfolio to cross-promote. 
some thoughts about marketing. On the App Store, visibility is everything, right? There are 800,000 apps in the, um, in the iOS App Store. And if you're not in the top 100 of a category list, and hopefully in the top 25, you're virtually invisible. So that's like 1% of the apps can be in the top 1%. So how do you get visibility if you're not in one of those lists? What I've done is I've created my own user base, and I use that user base as to, um, to promote my new apps to. So I have a subset of all those users that I can go to and say, hey, I have a new app available, or hey, look at this, this app. You might be interested in that. And this is how I can get in, in front of, of users. Um, traditional methods, um, you, you should be doing these, um, but they're not sufficient. So have good keywords, advertise. Sometimes I have found it doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. Um, get featured. Um, Easier said than done. Um, uh, press, blog, social media, web. Um, but what's really worked for me is a portfolio strategy. Um, create levers. So I've created backend infrastructure to send messages, trans, uh, localized messages to, to my users. Um, I use um, in-app ads in my free apps. I use nag messages in my free apps, the more screens, push notifications. And I, I can control this all from, from my backend. So devote some development time to that. Um, free is really important, um, but you have, to offer, uh, you have to offer value in your free app. You can't just create a light disabled version. I found that doesn't work. You have to, as Evan Pagan says, move the free line. You have to offer quite a bit of functionality so, or, or content so that you can get a large number of downloads and then you can use that basically as a cornerstone for your portfolio strategy. I'm going to walk through um, some marketing uh, vignettes, some, some different things I've tried and, and how they've played out. First off, when I first released uh, Quick Reader, about two weeks later, there, were, there was one of these um, uh, Apple Tech Talk tours up in Seattle. I'm in Portland. So I drove up to Seattle, and I was able to show my app to one of the UI evangelists, and he really liked it. And he said, go show this to one of the, the marketing people there from Apple. And I showed it to her. She really liked it. The next week, I was featured on, on the App Store which was awesome. I, I've been featured twice, one for that, that first app and the second time when I released 2.0 of, of Quick Reader with iPad support. And as you can see, you get this great spike and then it comes down, kind of levels out. I, I was at a conference last year and one of the, uh, a former dev evangelist from Apple said, if you get featured on the App Store, it will change your life. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, for two weeks maybe. But you know, not, <laughs> not that I don't recommend it. I mean, it's really awesome. And, you know, when it was first happening, I, I thought, well, I've got it made. You know, I've, I've arrived, but, well, you can see what happened then. Um, the next thing I did was when I released um, Mega Reader, I, I did a deal. So I do cross-promotion both within my own app, but in this case, I cross-promoted with another um, developer in the books category, and he already had a large installed base of, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of users, and we made an agreement where he, he had a book cataloging app. So lots of people like to catalog their books. So in his app, if you went to the book detail page, there was a read button, and if you press the read button and they had Mega Reader installed, it would take you to Mega Reader. If you didn't, then it would prompt you to buy it. And likewise, in my app, I had a button to add your, your book to um, the iBookshelf app, and if you didn't have it, I, I would prompt you. And this was, this was great. The very first day within hours, I went to number five in, in the books category, and I maintained that for a, a long time. Cross promotion is, is huge and, and probably the key marketing strategy on, on the App Store for independent developers. Nag messages have worked really well for me. So this is in my um, ebook search, my, my free app, and here is a, a nag message to GoPro to upgrade to the um, ebook search pro. And um, it says upgrade to ebook search pro and apply and enjoy two more catalogs with no advertising. So you can see here, here's an ag message and there's a learn more button. I use a service called AppSolar that allows me to do cross app analytics. So you can see here, um, over 45,000 people saw that message. And then, sorry, 24% um, actually clicked on the learn more button and 7% of those actually bought the app for, for a, um, an end to end conversion rate of 1.5%, which is really good. And this is, uh, this is the uh, impact. So when I release eBook Search Pro, this is your typical app launch, right? You know, you, you hopefully have a, a great launch, and then it comes down, and, and you hope it kind of levels out, you know, around here. But it typically keeps going down, down, down until you're, you know, making $3 a day. Um, what I did here is I did a nag message in my eBook Search app, and it immediately brought it up. And then I did another one here, another one here, another one here. You can see I, I was able to use this to maintain the, the ranking and the, and the revenue from that app. 
Um, icon, um, your icon is super important. You know, it, it has to um, pop on the, th this is on the phone, it has to pop. It, it has to stand out against the other icons. I found red r works really well. Um, once they click on your icon, they're going to go to this app detail page. They're going to see your icon again and then your, your full title. Here they just see a few letters of your title. Here they see the whole thing plus your tagline. So that's important. That's the second thing. Third, they're going to see your first screenshot. And this is, you, you can put anything there. It, typically people put shots of their, their app, but you can put a regular advertisement here. So you can put ad copy here, which is uh, what I've done. It's been super effective. And then if they scroll down, then they might see the first paragraph of, of your description of your, of your actual copy. And these um, screenshot advertisements have been very effective for me. You can see here, um, this is ebook search. Um, and for the longest time, it was around 30 in the free books category. And this was around the time that I introduced that, that screenshot advertisement, and it put me into the, the top 20. And I've um, been able to stay there consistently. Um, this is a, a promotion I did. I, I added a feature to the app where it had a, um, a video background to, to the book reader. And I, I did a campaign where I played up the dangers of walking and reading and, and highlighted you know, the, the padding that they put on a street in the, in the UK and the girl who fell into a manhole cover. And um, I did a humorous video, which if we have a, a minute at the end, I'd, I'd like to show you. Um, but just looking at the results from that, um, it was kind of like an um, Apple feature, a great spike, and then it came down and kind of leveled out. So it was a lot of fun to do. I really enjoyed it. I'd do it again, but it didn't really have a lasting um, impact on sales. <clears throat> So um, just to recap, um, bootstrapping, just start, burn the boats, um, go all in, um, aim for the masses, uh, international appeal, um, be exceptional with, with your app, uh, use a portfolio strategy, and cross-promote.